Okay, as I was saying before, I wouldn't delete the file out of the spool area myself. But what I would do is I would use the cancel command uh, to cancel it, because the cancel command will also handle the metadata in the CC file. And it, every, it, it will be a nicer way to kill the thing than just simply deleting it out of the print queue. Um, or else, better yet, I might let the, tell the user which file it is and let him delete it. So I'm not deleting his information. Um, OK. Um, that pretty well wraps up what I was going to say about printers. Um, the CUP system is very well documented. And um, it's a very flexible system. It's well documented. I think you can do most anything you want with it. As I say, most of the custom work I've done, I've done with the LPD system. But the more I think about it, the more I think, you know, it, in the future, I'd probably do it with the CUP system, especially because the CUP system is easier to use for well-known, well-supported printers. And um, um, and you can't run both at once because they use the same command names and things of that type. I will say, if you did use the LPD system, they do not store their files in the same area in slash var slash spool. As I recall, LPD stores their files in an area slash var slash spool slash LPD or something like that. Uh, they use a different name, but the concept is almost identical. Um, OK, we'll go back to this area here. And let's take a look at what we're going to be talking about now. I should mention a little thing uh, a bit about other devices. Um, scanners, you can set up usually through the um, um, through your GUI interface. Scanners tend to be pretty easy to set up. And um, you don't have to worry about queuing or anything of that type. You just put in a scanner. And it reads it through the USB port. And nobody worries about queuing or anything. Uh, because most scanners, the guy that physically puts the paper in the scanner and controls the scanner physically controls everything to do with the scanner. So you don't have all of those worries. Um, cameras, nowadays, most cameras, this wasn't true in the early days of cameras. But right now, most cameras uh, use those little cards and um, uh, SD cards or XD cards or something like that. Uh, you can take those out and put them into your computer using a card reader or whatever. It, they are formatted as FAT32 formatting. So you just mount the thing as another disk drive, read it as another disk drive, format it, do whatever you want with it. and. Um, uh, by and large, cameras are very transparent. Um, usually, the files are JPEG files or GIF files. Uh, if you've got a, a camcord-type camera, um, they're a little more complex, actually. Some of them are just AVI files, or 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 like I've got an audio recorder, and they give you WAV files. Um, others are have formats that are. I just got a, a camcorder of some sort, a um, JVC. And they use some sort of format I'd never heard of. But when I look it up on the internet, it seems to be a well-supported format that I can translate everything to a, um, using open source software. I can translate everything to uh, AVI files. And it comes right into OpenShot or Kino or lives or one of the other video editors. And you know it, it's pretty pretty straightforward. Um, 3D plot printers, as I say, you hook them up just like any printer. Um, barcode readers are, I've had a little more trouble with them in a strange way. Um, I've got a, a card scanner for scanning credit cards. And uh, actually, it's really easy to hook up. It hooks through a USB port. 
since every file in Linux, since every device is a file, I scan my credit card, which I won't do in front of you, and it just spits it out to the screen for me, and uh, I could do anything I want with that. I don't have any software at the moment that runs that, but I could easily write software that would pick up the stream coming back from the credit card, throw it into the web form that PayPal uses or whatever bank I'm using to process the credit cards, and that it would work cool. I must confess right now I'm using Windows software for processing credit cards. Um, um, but I've often thought about writing the code to use uh, Linux because um, because it's awfully in I, uh, because sometimes it's inconvenient for me to be using a Windows machine when I'm uh, accepting credit cards because um, the type of work I do I have to have a Linux machine so if I need a Windows machine too it uh, means I need two machines um, okay um, the next section in the book talks about log file management and we'll um, uh, we talked about log file management earlier in the course, and we had a lab on log, a log file management. And once again, the log files are stored in slash var slash log or slash logs. And their format varies a great deal, but log files are important, and you'll spend a lot of time poking in log files every time something bad happens. Um, I'm going to let you read the area on log file management. And then I will come back for another part of a video, and we will discuss um, um, user administration. So bye-bye.